Hello, I'm Kate Sobrano. Tonight's Australian story is about a man who I first met on Dancing with the Stars. David Graham is a farmer. He's a farmer who pushes many boundaries. And sometimes his dreams put him at odds with others, including his own family. This is his story. Come up. Come up, come on. Good girl. Dogs are my life. You come home to your own dog and it's so excited to see you and it says, you know what, I don't judge you. I don't, I don't think that you did so bad today or anything like that. I don't care about any of that. All I care about is that you're home and you're safe and you're here with me. And David's childhood was tough. Well, I'm not saying he's a dog boy, but yeah, he just learnt to just be like the dogs and they became his best friend. I can remember one time he was being naughty and I said, if you keep that up, you can go and sleep outside with the dogs. So that was a pretty good incentive for me to be naughty. <laughs> because I thought it was fantastic. I'm like, yes, I don't have to sleep alone in my bed. I get to go and hang out with my mates. I realised then he was deliberately trying to be naughty so he could go outside with the dogs. So that came to a, an abrupt end. <laughs> you go way back, go way back. There were so many high expectations of David. He was going to be the one that would carry forward my father's dream. Yeah, quick, come on, he would run quick. the farm, he would get married, he would have children. And then that next generation would keep it this whole empire that my father has built going. Stop. Come, quick. I think I was born specifically to take on the farm. That's what I was always led to believe as a kid. It was, it was my yeah, duty yeah, to yeah. take it on. Hey, you go back to mum. It was something that I wanted to do, but at the same token, it didn't, definitely didn't close off the rest of the world to me. Here's this kid from Gundawindi on this big glitzy TV show in the city. I think that it was a positive experience. It definitely helped me to deal with many of my demons. David came out on live television. My heart sank, honestly, and you do question people's integrity. I just feel like a whole lot of the things you said to me were bull****. I knew David long before I ever saw him on Big Brother, which I think was a bad move, David. <laughs> um, That's not fair. There's a stereotype you want to break down. You, you try and not reinforce it by uh, going on some sort of paranoid, voyeuristic load of rubbish, which was Big Brother. This is Dancing with the Stars live. Let's hear the Farmer Dave story. It's a man's world. Certainly did give David a springboard into the media spotlight, which he does enjoy. And it's like a moth, I guess. It does attract him, or they're, they're attracted to him. You look great right up until you started dancing, unfortunately. <laughs> By the time I came along, Dad was in his 50s. He had this little kid that he had to deal with that I think was quite different to his other children. I spent most of the years before school out with Dad, be it on the grader or just sitting on the back of the ute, um, out of the way, out of trouble. We were grading down this fence line when we first come here. David sat on the outside. The blade caught a stump. David shot out of the seat, but I pulled up and decided there's only one thing to do. I found a bit of rope and laced him to the back of the seat. He tied me in with big, thick flax rope and uh, totally called me in so that I couldn't move. <laughs> I spent the entire day tied into this bloody, tied as all hell to the, uh, to the side of the door. His father didn't talk to him a lot. It was just, follow me, I'm in a hurry. Keep up or miss out. <laughs> There's plenty of times where I'd be left at a gate. 
one time David was extremely dehydrated. Then Max came home and he just said, well, I left him there and drove away. He'd keep going <laughs> and then, you know, it's a, it's a 14k um, jog to get back to the, the homestead. Yeah, I, I, I'm a different dad. You've got to be prepared to walk the line and uh, accept life as it is. It's not a game. And be responsible. And um, a lot of people find that just hard to... It gives them indigestion, actually. Dad would have got angry or being rough or or chastising me, I'd start crying, which he always saw as the ultimate weakness, and, and, you know, he'd beat me to stop crying, and then, but Mum would not stop him, but she'd always come in and speak to me afterwards and tell me to be strong and tell me that, you know, all, all you've got to do is do what your dad says and you'll be right and you'll get through. Yes, that happened a lot. That's where I felt my role was to compensate for, for Max. So, yeah, I was there for the balancing act. What about the time one of the workmen put you down a post hole? And then forgot about me and left me Left down you the there. <laughs> I think David always felt that he was never going to achieve anything like his father or never get his father's approval. But Max, he's just not one that praises uh, people all the time. No, no, um, because once a kid thinks they're better than they are, you're creating a problem. Each a child works up to a level. When they've achieved that level, they prepare for the next one. And then you praise them when they've reached that. It's, it's like climbing a ladder. As I grew older, he became much, much rougher and, and uh, much quicker to be frustrated by, by what I was not doing right in his eyes. Going away to boarding school, you know, suddenly I was exposed to this whole world and, and learning stuff and, and not being chastised from my dad from learning. A lot of the time, there was something missing. I didn't think that I was gay at all. But the problem was that as I matured, that admiration of men that was inside me turned more and more to actual attraction. And then there was just this most disgusting and abhorrent battle that happened inside me. Everyone called him a fag and said he was gay and, you know, he used to get picked on quite a bit at school. He was horrifically bullied at that school and I'd witnessed it. I walked into the dorms and I could hear um, all these boys chanting and... Sorry, I'm getting emotional again. Um, picking on him. My brother just carrying in the corner with these... Oh, this huge group of boys. I just scooped him up, just scooped him up and took him away. What we're about to receive, may the Lord mind is truly thankful for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. He left school, but uh, he made friends away from the locals. I think that's where David's took the a slightly different approach. In 1999, one weekend, a mate of mine decided that, yeah, we'll head off to Sydney. Yeah, so I walked into a, a modelling agent with my boots and my jeans and my big belt buckle and my <laughs> funny outback accent, and um, they fell for it. And next thing I knew, I was on a plane and off I went to Europe. Yeah, it was um, opposite what I would do. Yeah, I, I'm not for it. I, I must be honest. I would have happy me up with a crowbar and shovel. That would have pleased me more. Within a week, I was in Rome and I was <laughs> modelling and I was doing Hugo Boss. That packed the world for a couple of years. 
worked all my way through Russia, Mongolia, and met this local guy who um, I just kept meeting throughout Mongolia. It was so extraordinary that I was so attracted to this, this person. And I remember one night we kissed and I don't think I'd ever felt so much electricity from another person, so much, so much overwhelming power of that's just right. I knew at that moment that, that my life was going to be a little bit different from then on. <laughs> I thought, this is extraordinary. You know, should I stay or should I go? But then, you know, there was that attraction back to my, my farm and everything that I knew. So I arrived back in Australia. My dad allowed me to have my own 5,000 acres and to, to run my own project which is uh, using exotic sheep breeds and, and land management practices. You know, he ran the whole sheep farm by himself for a few years. I had a fair idea that possibly he was gay, but he sort of never said anything. I do remember asking him once and he denied it. I think that was probably the hardest part of his life. He went through an internal battle for a couple of years, searching for anything to feel. Why am I feeling so sad? Why am I so blue? Why am I so angry? Why don't I fit? There would have been scores of times where um, rather than shoot hungry sheep, I thought that, that I should be the one taking a bullet. How are you? Good. Good to see you. My mother had always been there for me. I realised that, that I couldn't go on any longer, um, not having her know who I was and know where I was at in my life. I really had accepted my sexuality, so I told her. Of course, I was totally in a state of shock, I guess. Like I do when I can't deal with something, I um, just go blank. And that's how I went for some time. Mm. I had 